Hello everyone, this is Miss Beth from the Door County Library. We are having virtual visits. Oh my goodness, this time we are going to the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary. So where is the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary? It is on the way to Green Bay. It's on the, uh, on the edge of Green Bay as you're coming down from us. And the easiest way to get there is to take the highway down and when you get to Green Bay, instead of uh, you, you want to turn to the right, so veer to the right, take the very next exit off, and it is right next to, it's within walking distance of the Bay Beach uh, Amusement Park. So you can go to the amusement park and go to the wildlife sanctuary, and you can do all kinds of wonderful things. There's lots of places and trails to walk around and there are uh, ducks and geese to feed and you can you can pick up corn from them because they like you to only feed them corn they don't want you to feed them all kinds of other things um, and you can see the birds that are in the cages over in the bird area and then they have wolves they have all kinds of really cool animals but today we are going to have a visit with the naturalists who are going to show us some of the things that they do in their building. So I'm gonna share my screen just really quick here. All right, this is their website and they can have, they have all kinds of different information, the tours and you can rent rooms there. I've gone to meetings at that building. There's all kinds of interesting programs and self-guided things and things for little kids. There's also stuff about their summer hours. They were so neat. They showed all kinds, they will show you all kinds of really cool stuff in this video. So I think that we should just have me stop talking and we will show you the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary. The naturalists are so nice there. All right, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did when I was looking at these videos. Bye-bye, everybody. Good morning, everyone. It's Kim Diedrich, and I am here at the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary in Green Bay, and I wanted to fill you in a little bit on what has been happening here at the sanctuary while we have been in this weird COVID situation for the past year. So. We have been updating and redoing a lot of our inside exhibits in our nature center. So I'm just going to highlight a few of those today and talk about some other things that have been happening while our buildings have been closed to the public. So standing here um, beside me, you can see is a nice display on different nests of birds. The sanctuary is on a major migratory route for many of our migratory bird species who go south for the winter and then come back north in the spring. And many of them nest here right at the sanctuary property. So in this display, um, you can see what the different nests would look like. And also there's information on the bird species. And something really cool is you can take the camera on your phone and scan the QR codes that are on these exhibits to get more information on those particular birds. So that is one display that we have been working on. And then directly behind that on our large wall is an area that you can see has all different mounts of some of our mammals. Um, many of them have horns or antlers. So we have moose, we have white-tailed deer up here um, and the different racks from elk and other deer species as well. And this whole area has been redone um, while we have had our building closed as well. We're still working on some of the information, the written information that will be going back up on the wall so that you can identify what all of those different racks are. So those are a couple of big things that have been happening in the Nature Center. We are going to move a little bit and talk about some other things as well. Continuing on with our sort of bird theme that's happening inside the Nature Center, here you can see is a display of bird boxes. Um, these are used by multiple species of birds as their house or maybe, maybe as a feeding shelf. So again, QR codes are here. You can scan that code. You can get the dimensions so that you can build many of these houses yourself and put them out around your property also. 
Our spring bird hikes have also started at the sanctuary. They are held on Wednesdays and Saturday mornings. And because we have so many people interested in birds, we have put this display together of a giant bird checklist. So there are over a hundred species of birds that are listed here, and we are keeping track of what people are seeing out here at the sanctuary. Something else that Jody and I do every day, um, even when COVID is not happening, is we are responsible for taking care of a number of live animals who are in pod areas in the nature center. So we have to feed these critters, we have to check on them every day, um, rearrange their furniture so they have enrichment or something to do. So right now I'm going to feed our leopard gecko and our white tree frog and our tiger salamander. So basically these critters are all here um, for some reason, whether it was being an unwanted pet or something um, is not quite right with them. Leopard geckos are not native to Wisconsin, so he was a pet, and you will notice that it looks like he has two heads. That is because he has lost part of his tail. So I kind of wiggle a live cricket in front of him, and you can see he's very hungry. He just takes that right away. Can you? you will also notice with the leopard gecko right now that he was shedding. Um, he needs to do that when he grows and gets bigger, but he has a little bit of shed skin still kind of on his eyeball. And you can see he's licking his eyeball right now. That does make it a little bit harder for him to see. So again, having that movement of wiggling the cricket in front of him, um, that helps him know, oh, and he missed. See, that, that happens sometimes as well. So we'll just make sure that he has another chance to get that one and there you go. So let's move over um, to a, the other side of this cage area and we this morning. This is our Australian white tree frog, again, non-native, um, who's trying to climb up the wall of his exhibit this morning. He also eats crickets, so if I wiggle this in front of him, he does have very poor eyesight and you can see that also with um, looking at his eyes as well but he generally is a fairly good eater. So again, I kind of wiggle the cricket for him, kind of touch the end of his nose mouth area. He's <laughs> too busy sliding, I think, right now. Well, let's go to the salamander. The tiger salamander is a native species, and he is in the water dish. Also doesn't have great eyesight. Wiggle that cricket in front of him, and he takes that as well. So we go through a lot of crickets here at the sanctuary because a number of our animals do eat crickets. Um, with these three, they are hand fed, again, by Jody and myself primarily. Oh, you grabbed onto the tweezers. You need to get that back to me, bud, so I can get you some more. So again, just an example of three of the animals that we are taking care of um, on a daily or every other day basis that live here at the Nature Center. Another part of our job that Jody and I are very um, intimately involved with is taking care of some of our program ambassador animals. Our ambassador animals are critters who have come through our rehab program and are unable to be released back out into the wild. So right now um, I have one of our ambassador fox snakes with me. Um, this was a snake who was found in someone's house in the middle of winter a couple years ago hibernating or trying to hibernate and the folks did not want this snake in their basement, so they brought it here to the sanctuary. And being that it was the middle of winter and cold and frozen ground, it was unable to be released back out into the wild. You can see it has gotten very used to being handled by us. Um, this past year, a lot of our ambassador animals basically haven't been what we say working because we haven't been doing a lot of in-person programming. We have been doing virtual programming, um, so people have had a chance to see some of our ambassadors, but they haven't been able to get up close with them like they have in the past. However, that is going to be changing soon. 
All right, another one of our critters that we take care of is Elmer, who is our little southern flying squirrel, and he's kind of hiding in his bag this morning. Um, not only do we need to feed and take care of our critters that way, but we also provide what we call enrichment for them. So that is something um, active that keeps their mind active and sometimes <gasps> keeps them physically active. So one of the ways that we provide enrichment for Elmer is putting him in his little exercise ball. So we're going to put him in the ball this morning and let him have a chance to roll around um, and down our hallway. Okay, Elmer is now in his ball. Um, some days it takes him a little while to get acclimated to being in there. But I'm just going to give him a little roll and see if he will continue to, to run on his own. Once he gets going, he does make it all the way down the hallway. Some days we have to block off areas to keep him out of getting caught under a desk or under a chair or something like that. But again, this is one way to provide enrichment for him. It does get him out and gets him exercising and, and moving around a bit. One of our most popular critters that we take care of here in the Nature Center is peaches, our Moluccan cockatoo. Um, again, a non-native species. Peach is here with us um, because she was an unwanted pet and she is one of our oldest animals that is here that Jody and I take care of. Peach is now 30 years old. We do try to get her out of her enclosure every day. You can see she's up on her um, perch right now. A lot of times she likes to climb off of her perch and run down the hallway. And one of her favorite toys or enrichment tools that we have is this old plastic watering can. So I'm gonna set that down on the floor. Um, we will see if Peach wants to get down. She also seems to like a lot of the men on our staff. If she hears any of their voices, a lot of times, again, she will climb off of her perch, run down the hall, and try to go into their offices. Um, you can see she can be pretty loud. She is a highly intelligent bird. She does actually say about 12 or 15 words or phrases that are clearly understood by people. Um, Peach is not out where public has access to her as far as um, looking at her or reaching into her cage. She is kept in the office area, um, but she loves interacting with people. So here is Peach. If she gets down on the floor or moves around, we will record that for you and send that along as well. But again, these are just some of the things that have been happening behind the scenes. Um, with Jody and myself here at the Nature Center at the Wildlife Sanctuary. Beginning on Saturday, May 1st, I'm happy to say that our buildings will be fully open. So you will have a chance to come and visit and see many of these animals and exhibits and displays that I have been talking about this morning. As always, the sanctuary is free um, and open to the public. And again, starting Saturday, we will be open daily from 8 a.m. Most of the grounds are open until 6, 6.30 or 7.30 p.m. So check out our website at baybeachwildlife.com and you can get up-to-date information and we hope to see you all visiting soon. Hello. Are you a pretty bird? Are you a pretty girl? Say hi, Peaches. Hello, Peaches.